right, welcome everybody. Welcome back to Home Cooking with Chef Larche. We are glad you're here tonight. This is se episode number seven of season two. Can you believe that? Wow, we only got two more crazy. to go this season and then it'll be that's summer incredible. vacation. <laughs> we'll say bon voyage to all you guys. And so anyway, welcome back. It's good to have you back. Um, so my name is Bob Benson. I'm the host here. Uh, he's Miguel Larche. He is the one who the program's named after. He's our, the one who gives all the excellent recipes and cooking instruction. His understudy is Emily Graham. Emily is a teacher here at the Grayling Elementary School. And I'm a pastor and physical therapist. We've got a few churches down in the Cadillac area. So anyway, I'm excited about this. You know, here we are in the month of March. And let me just show you what I think of when I think of March. <laughs> so when I, I think of March, I think I'm going to Florida. I got my beach towel and I'm ready to hit the beach. How about you guys? <laughs> And I'll tell you what, I like, I know this is more a West Coast thing than an East Coast thing, but I like boogie boarding and I love to surf. So I'm a big in that. Of course, being a, the Howley boy that I am, uh, I got to protect from sunscreen for sun, skin cancer like my dad had and a little bit of after effects like uh, aloe vera. But anyway, so for those of you who head to Florida, get your vitamin D, a little bit of sunshine, be safe about it and have a great time. But we're on to some better things today. So we're going to give you some great instructions. So what do we got on the docket tonight? Okay, what are we cooking? So what do we find today? Okay, we have uh, pizza. Do you like pizza? I love pizza. Okay, we have all kind of different pizza. We're going to have Hawaiian pizza. We're going to have Alfredo pizza. We're going to have also uh, Mediterranean pizza. Sound good? Very good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. And uh, you know, I love the Caribbean. I love the ocean for the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no shock. <laughs> Where you <laughs> have anyway. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, uh, do we start now? Yep. Okay. So, what we'll do is we'll have a word of prayer. But okay. I, I do want to say one thing too. Most of you have been watching the news lately, and uh, if you're as troubled as I am about what's going on in Ukraine and war is never a pretty picture, loss of life, uh, a lot of sadness in the air. So, I thought what we do is we have a prayer, and then we would pray for what's happening in Ukraine and ask God to help peace to prevail and that uh, God's work can go forward there. So let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you that you love us. In this country, we take so granted uh, the, for granted the freedoms that we have. We're not at war, Lord, as far as with any nation, but we know that there is a spiritual warfare that's going on for every heart and every soul. So Lord, we wanna pray especially right now for our Ukraine part of the human family and our Russian part of the human family. Each of them are brothers and sisters of ours in the human race. And Lord, somehow we would just ask that you would help to bring peace to that area. Lord, I just pray you'll preserve life. And you'll help there to be a solution sometime and soon according to your will. But tonight too, we'd ask you to pour out your spirit upon us, that you bless us as we seek to learn how to take care of our body temples that were created in your image and your likeness, that we'd be good stewards of our physical body and that we learn how to take care of our spiritual body too, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, we'll check okay. back in a few minutes. I think we should take our, the cutting board out and put it here first. We don't need this for now. Okay, so the principle for pizza is flour. We have some whole wheat flour to make it a little bit healthier, okay? So whole wheat flour and white unbleached flour. So they have the recipe there. I hope uh, we send the recipe in advance. Some, some of you have been asking uh, can we have the recipe in advance so we, they can they want to follow us and do the same thing so that was ex that's exciting so yeah. hopefully some of you uh, did exactly this and um, you can follow us and do the same thing with us okay so uh, we already measured the flour and the whole wheat flour set so it's two cup of um, uh, actually it's three cup of unbleached flour and uh, one cup of white flour uh, 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 whole wheat flour okay so you're going to go ahead and put two teaspoon of, of uh, one teaspoon actually one teaspoon of yeast so um i like to put the yeast first the reason why because uh and we mix the yeast into the flour okay the yeast uh, the flour is like the the rain coat protecting the the yeast from any other agent you know okay. what i mean so yeah, if you so. put if you put salt mixed with the yeast what will happen and the flour it will slow down the rising process if you put the sugar mixed with the yeast and and uh what you it, it, the it, it will rise so fast it will ferment too fast okay? okay so you want you don't want this so uh, now the flour the yeast is well protected with the flour so okay. now we can add salt so go ahead put two teaspoons of salt <laughs> I'm excited to do this with you Emily 
<laughs> It'd be so exciting to see what will happen with this pizza today. <laughs> <no>? <laughs> uh -huh. And and you, you see, you, you can also uh, flavor this. Also, you can put some rosemary. You can put uh, okay. uh, I don't know fennel seed if you want. You can do all kind of things like this That's into so pretty. your course. I'm sorry, you, it's you like a sponge. Is it's it? Like little, oh yes, like yours hole. is like. What Sorry. happened? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Do I need to mix it? Yeah. Yes, mix okay. it again, and then go ahead and put your olive oil. Uh, this is uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil, so we're going to put about a quarter of a cup. Okay. Okay. So What's you your favorite way to flavor? Uh, I like rosemary inside. If you want to do this, you can put some rosemary. Okay. You, and I say, and and I have something called herbe de Provence. Let me put a pinch of it just to show you I can do it. <laughs> so okay. other Provence basically there is lavender, there is all kind there is oregano, there is basil, lavender, uh, tarragon, basil. all those things they are in the herb de Provence. Okay, there is uh, 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 probably about seven different kind of herbs, okay? Okay. So or five actually. So cool. now uh, the water. We want to use I know many pizza recipes they ask for cold uh, uh, warm water. Uh -huh. But I have cold water. Okay. The reason why I don't want my course to develop too fast too fast okay. too fast so uh this course is best uh it rests overnight is the texture of the dough will be better okay okay it's incredible it'll be rustic flavorful because the resting process okay it's a 24 hours pizza so i know but if but if you do, do want the pizza to be done like you use warm water uh -huh. so you can use it right away right okay away. okay um but when you make pizza for like the nature's nest, you yes. use the cold water, you let it rest. Yes, I, I leave yes. it for two, so two days, at least two, two? days. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Actually, it's three days because I started on Sunday uh -huh. and I, I make it. Yes. So, yes. And it's, it's just, I like the flavor. It's so, it's incredible because uh, it's like the same thing when we do um, baguette, rustic bread. Uh -huh. um, most of rustic bread starts with a pat fermenté, so it's a three day process. Okay. So you never make a rustic bread like a, a baguette in, in one uh, in one day. My the Italian bread most of the time is two days process, two to three days. Okay. okay so two cup of this. Okay. Okay. Cold water. And then you take your hand and you just do this process like this. Take your finger and okay. just bring it together. See, like that. <laughs> it's good so far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so after we come together so now we're going to put it on the table and we're going to start kneading, kneading these things and if you didn't need, do need some some uh some water more water to uh, gather the rest of the flour Maybe, it's, uh, yeah. i'm going to take some to just to gather yeah. a little bit more okay thank you okay mm-hmm you need more yeah, maybe a little. How, okay. how wet is it? You don't want to it too firm, tacky, tacky, but not sticky, okay? So maybe, do you think I need a little more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, do a little bit more. Do you put two cups? Yeah, but it was a little, probably a little under maybe. Okay. Just a little bit. Perfect. My, mine is ready. Do you want to use mine? Um. <laughs> 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 That's good. I okay. Think I think it's Let okay. Is it okay or no? Yeah, it's 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 okay. There's flour between, okay. but it's uh, it's it's Needs there. More. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <It's a laughs> okay. So this is the texture you want. It's 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 not sticky. Uh, it's tacky, but not sticky. It doesn't uh, stick to your hand. And this is the texture I, I really look for. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it up. And. Uh, okay, perfect. It's here. I'm going to take this water down. You okay? <laughs> Let's put yours. Okay. Here, the table. And so now the, it's, it will take about ten minutes, uh, ten to 15, ten minutes really to need it to come to the to uh, to the texture you want. Okay. So we won't take ten minutes to do it for lack of time. So. We, Perfect. You want to press it down with your palm of your hand and bring it back together. It, it, it seems <laughs> sticky at first, but I will not put flour. I will just work it out until, until uh, there is a good consistency. I, I will not need the flour. Okay, it starts to get 
good. Everything <laughs> is moving here. Uh, it's like an earthquake right now. Hopefully, do nothing falling apart there. <laughs> this is a way to release stress, you know. <laughs> yeah. Make some bread. It's it's great. It's really great. Okay, so you see that the camera um, seeing this close, close, perfect. Okay, very good, Emily. Wow. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. You're doing such a good <laughs> job on this. Okay, while you're doing this, <laughs> yeah, you're going to start the Alfredo sauce. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to start kneading, and you will start from this. So you're okay. going to put some two tablespoon of Earth Balance, the, the vegan butter, and two tablespoon of flour. The Alfredo okay. sauce will be for uh, uh, one of the topping for the pizza. That makes sense. Uh-huh. Yeah. Two tablespoons Maybe, butter, uh, two tables. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. No <laughs> problem. <laughs> okay. Okay, and I, I'm still doing okay. this while you're doing this. So you're going to uh, take uh, two tablespoons of the butter uh -huh. and you go ahead and put the fire on. And uh, I have some diced onion, about a tablespoon of diced onion here. You're going to put it also with, with the butter, okay? Sorry, wait, okay, so two tablespoons of butter in the pot? Yeah, yeah, a nice heap pink butter. Heaping. <laughs> and uh, two of this. And uh, when it, uh, you can add right away your um, your onions. It's about a tablespoon of onions, diced what onions. Were, what was the other thing I needed two diced tablespoons onions. of before this, or before that? No, this one first. Oh, then onions? After, yes, you can oh, put the oh, whole thing. Okay. And there is a spatula there, you can stir it. Okay. And this oh, is thanks. for the Alfredos, so that would be uh, one topping for the pizza. And okay. uh, uh, it's a white sauce, but I call it Alfredo. Uh, I will put some cheese in it. Okay, so um, okay. then the next things after it melts down, you're going to put two nice heaping of uh, uh, white and bleached flour. Okay. And then we're going to put the milk. The milk today, I decided to put oat milk. Oh, nice. Okay, is there is no sugar? It's very low in sugar, so it's 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 have a nice. Flavor. I really like the oatmeal. Have you tried oatmeal? It's Maybe once really, I liked really it. It's really nice. I, I yeah. couldn't believe the, the flavor. It's, I like it as much as the soy milk. Wow. Uh, anybody can see this, the, the oatmeal here? And this is what we're using today for to make the, the white sauce. Oatmeal. And we, if you can find it, we have it here at the Nature's Nest. Okay? The Nature's Nest uh, Campus Abo store. We open from 10, 10 to 5 from Tuesday to Thursday. Monday we are closed. On Friday we open 10 to 2 and Sunday 10 to 2. Uh, how high do you, how high do I do this? Yeah. Good. Is that bad? That's nice. Oh, do you put good, the flour good. in already? Yeah, I did. Okay. Is it too <laughs> That's early? Right. No, it's all right. You did well. Okay, this it was melted. This is for a okay? The flour and butter is a woo. Okay. R-O-U-X. Okay, and I will put a little bit more flour. Okay, just put one more tablespoon. One more? Okay. I don't think it was very well heaping. Seemed like. Yeah, I didn't really heap it. Okay, so now, then you, after this, you're going to add two cups of soy milk, or uh, oat milk. I add the whisk here. But you want to make sure the flour cook well, okay? Yeah. Cook well for about, uh, about one, 30 seconds. Just on low? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, my, my dough is getting really, really nice. If you can s see the consistency. Okay, so how do you know a dough is sweaty? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so something is called a window pan also. The window pan, when you stretch your dough and uh, it doesn't break and you can see through basically. So here, I take a piece of dough here and I stretch it. Okay. I stretch it and stretch it and it breaks easy, okay? That's yeah. means it's sweaty. So okay. when you stretch it and it's, it's, you stretch it and stretch it and it become like transparent, mm -hmm. kind of you can see through, that mm -hmm. means it's ready without breaking. Okay. okay. And it's called a window pen. A window pane? Window pen. A oh. window yeah. and pen. P-A-N. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. I can put the milk in now. Yes. Yeah? Go ahead. Put two cups of milk. Okay. Yeah. Well, one and a half cup of milk is fine. <laughs> one and a half cups. Okay. And uh, use the whisk when you uh, pour the milk in. Okay. It's important so it doesn't create no lump. So uh, yeah. a roux is a cold milk or room temperature milk with hot. 
if you both are is hot, it's going to create lumps. Okay, so okay. one is cold and one is is perfect. Wow, you're doing. S <laughs> okay, you can pull it out from the sinks there yeah, and oh. keep stirring. No, keep stirring. Take it off of it. Yeah, to help you to, so it doesn't create some lumps. Okay. Okay. And then you can put it back. Stir it very nicely. Okay. Before you add the next one, stir it nice. Make sure you stir well. Then you can add the the, the other one. I can't Perfect. Tell if it's no, I it's think the it's just the onion. Yes. Yeah, okay. This is beautiful. You got it. Okay. Okay. Put another half a cup of milk. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love burn. this. I love this. Hey, <laughs> she's doing well. I think she's doing very well. She's comfortable. She's she's the first time doing this, and she's like a professional at this. <laughs> Emily, I can't believe this. Okay, so now You're kind. <laughs> you <laughs> and you can put uh, some salt. About uh, I don't know. Salt to say it's about a quarter of a teaspoon. The value of a teaspoon. You don't have to measure it. Okay. Okay. For the purpose of this demonstration, I want to show them how to make a window pane. So I keep working on it. <laughs> <laughs> we see the kitchen <laughs> is falling apart and we part and we sing. <laughs> okay, so I, I want to show you the... Uh, is there a way that you can see inside? Um, let me see. Okay, um, let's, let's bring it. Oh, where do we go? There is a camera here. Okay, this is the camera here. What do I do? Here, you can show them. <laughs> Where am I? Perfect. Right there? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come closer. Uh, yes, you don't see. I can't tell. The, ah, they can see. Oh, okay, oh, perfect. Oh, there it is. Okay. Awesome. So I uh, showed them the consistency how thick it is. Okay. This is what you want for your pizza. It's nice and creamy. It's not too firm. Uh -huh. Perfect. I will cook it in about four more minutes. You want to cook the flour. Okay. So you want to let it cook a little bit. But and keep stirring it, okay? Okay. About, <laughs> let's say two minutes only. It should be fine. Okay. And in myself, I keep working on this. This is a good exercise. I have my exercise this morning, this afternoon, but I do another <laughs> one again. <sighs> what kind of pizza do you like usually, Emily? What kind of topping do you like in your pizza? Um, I like lots of vegetables. I'm uh -huh. looking forward to the Mediterranean pizza, ah, probably okay. the most, maybe. Okay, yes. I like Mediterranean pizza, this is my favorite actually. Yeah? Yeah, because the veg is in it, that's uh -huh. why. And if you have a, a, a electric mixer, you can go way faster than this. Electric <laughs> mixer, I will do five minutes on low and five minutes on high, okay? On medium, on medium, on high. And uh, then you have it, you'll be ready already. The work of love. Okay, how mm. is it com coming here? Eh? Beautiful. I will pull it up. And now, uh, do you taste it for salt? Um, I sure. have some spoon here. You can okay. take a spoon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and let's see if we have enough salt. And after that, let's put it in a, in a bowl so it can cool, cool down before we put on the on okay. the course, okay? Mm. How is mm. it? It's good, I think. I don't know. I always put not. I don't usually put enough salt. Okay. Do you want to try it? If you like it, it's good. I mean, I like it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I trust you. I don't know. Can I turn the burner? I have more spoon there all the time. Okay. Yeah. Turn it off. Yes. And let's put it in uh, here, something like that. Okay. Thank you. Yes. No. Okay, and it will uh, show the cat on the camera. <laughs> okay. Wait, I'm left-handed, I can't. <laughs> Here. Okay, sorry. I okay, we're almost there. It's my my left-handed. I couldn't figure out what I was doing. <laughs> okay, <Sorry>. so we... <laughs> <laughs> I think we are ready for the Bible, um, the Bible uh, and health. The what? Okay. Oh, yes, that'd be great. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay, and I will show you after everything, after the uh, the Bible meditations, we're going to show you the the course. Hopefully, you'll be ready by this time. And okay. Hopefully, my hand will be still good. My my hand will be still fine. Awesome. It looks nice already. The consistency is perfect. This is what I would love to have, and this is excellent. I'm going to need, I need some more kneading, and when when you see this coming so fast, I guess that means need to be more it should not 
spring back that fast, okay? When you say down, that means it's almost ready, okay? okay. But when you spring back too fast, it's not ready yet. Okay, go ahead. All right, so we're going to do our spiritual minute now. And uh, we've been looking at this Creation Life Study Guide set that is produced by It Is Written. So I'd encourage you, if you haven't seen it yet, I'd encourage you to go check it out on the website. It Is Written, Creation Life Study Set. And uh, this is our fourth presentation. So the first one, starting with the acronym CREATION, we talked about choices. Positive choices are important to have positive outcomes. So we talked about that. The second one was R, which represents rest. Your body needs rest in order to be fresh, invigorated, and able to go through things uh, that you face in life. The third one was the environment you live in. Try to have a healthy environment and uh, in the, everything from where you live, where you exercise, where you work as much as possible, as well as in your home and your private life. But tonight we're talking about the A, which represents activity, or we might say exercise so this is our a picture of our study guide but um, so first thing we discover is that um, there are benefits to exercise God designed us to be active he created us to be active Genesis 2 15 talks about how God put Adam and Eve in a garden and they were to tend the garden so they had healthy fruits and vegetables they had healthy food to eat in the garden um, but they also had to exercise to tend the vines and take care and gather the fruit and so forth to be able to eat it. So the God put the exercise and the healthy food together for them. How much thought did God put into making human beings? Psalms 139 verse 14 says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now those of you who've been through nursing or medical school or physical therapy and you've taken gross anatomy, neuroanatomy, physiologies, you know how awesome our body temple is. It's so amazing between the, the muscles and the bones and the neural system and the pathways, the nerves that come out and innervate all that stuff. The vision of the eye, all that stuff is absolutely f stunning and amazing. So God did an amazing job in how he made us wonderfully. Where do positive choices in lifestyle come from or begin? Psalms 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments, and his praise endures forever. So God has given us guidelines in his word that pertain to all kinds of areas of our life. Marriage relationships, conflict management, leadership. Um, there are just so many areas of life that are addressed in the Bible that reading it helps us as we go through life's experience as we as we cross those uh, those in our life we have wisdom from God on how to address them pertaining to health as well so it's important there's an interesting uh, comment here that is made by Viktor Frankl and he says between stimulus and response there is a space in that space is our power to choose our response in our response lies the growth our growth and our freedom isn't that awesome so there's the stimulus uh, maybe your boss says you know uh, we got a construction job we got to do and we got to move more sand so we can mix more make more concrete I need you to move that pile over there you know, so now you're going to have to do more physical exercise and you can choose and say, oh, I want to do it tomorrow. Whatever the choice, you make choices. You make choices to take care of how you eat and what you eat and uh, when you sleep and all of those things. And as you make those choices, it'll impact um, for good or for ill, your health and all of those things. What is one of the great gifts that God has given us? Isaiah 118 says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. So God uses reasoning a lot. Uh, God wants not only us to know the facts, he wants us to also do those things that are good for us to do. He wants us to be thinkers, but he also wants us to be doers, imitators of him. So what can help us strengthen our minds? 
this beautiful organ that God has given us. Well, a study of the Bible, again, it covers the depth of, of many areas. Um, most of the presidents of the United States, all the way down to recent times, spent time most days of the week reading their Bible because there was leadership skills in there and there was things that would give them guidance. Uh, even the judicial part, uh, portion of our government, um, many of the judges would read the Bible and they would understand what the principles of justice really are and mercy and how to blend those two together. So the Bible's important. Learn a new language can help to expand your mind, get on Duolingo and go after Spanish or some other language. It's helpful. Learn to play a musical instrument. That definitely takes time to practice it, to learn it. But when you f succeed at it, it's a real blessing. Feed your brain. Eat healthy berries and walnuts. And leafy green vegetables are especially healthy for your mind. Exercise your brain. There are such things as crossword puzzles and brain teasers and those kind of things keep you fresh and keep expanding your mind and your vocabulary, keep you learning. Volunteer at community service projects. Um, and you'll be a blessing to others. It's more blessed to give than receive. And the blessing comes back to you in having been a blessing to others. Socialize. Just mixing it up with other people helps to keep you fresh and, and your heart full of compassion for what people are going through in life and how you can make a difference in their life. How much of a connection is there between what I think about and how I act? Romans 12:2. do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed. How are you going to be transformed? By the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you can be transformed by renewing your mind, by learning scripture, memorizing it, meditating upon it, and asking God how to apply it to your life's experience. And God will help you make choices for the better and give you the strength and power you need to go through that. What if I struggle to do the right things? How can I make better choices? Mark 9.24 talks about Immediately, the father of this boy, who was demon-possessed, uh, he cried out with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. He knew that Jesus had the power to heal him, but he had a little bit of unbelief. And when God said, uh, when he asked Jesus to heal him, he says, if you can. And Jesus says, if I can, all things are possible to those who believe. And the father realized, you know what, I don't have quite enough faith Lord, I do have some faith. Help my unbelief. And that's a prayer we can always pray. Lord, we believe, but we don't understand how it's going to work out. Please help our unbelief so we don't have doubts. And that you can do the healing that is necessary in our lives, whatever healing it is that we need. What if I struggle to do the right things? How can I make better choices? Mark 9, 24. Oh, I'm sorry. Down one. How can we make the best care of our minds? Proverbs 3, 24. When you lie down... You will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. So adequate sleep is essential for clear thinking. And once again, we talked about the need for it to be dark when you're sleeping at night so that your pineal gland can secrete melatonin that gives you that feeling of freshness and vigor in the morning. Newest research says that there is also melatonin produced in, of all places, the mitochondria when you are exercising. That is new information on the scientific block. And so if you would like to have a greater feeling of refreshed vigor uh, and greater reserves, you want to get exercise as well as a good sleep at night. And we don't have time to talk about suggestions on better sleep. How can we improve ourselves physically? 1 Corinthians 10.31 talks about whether you, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So eating talked about already such things as fruits nuts grains and vegetables legumes um, that's important but also what you drink you know while you're being careful to eat raw foods are preferable a lot of times uh, good breakfasts are, are, are really good the healthiest eating before three o'clock or ear earlier than five is really good so you get a better night's sleep but also we got to be careful what we drink too much uh, processed sugary drinks is not healthy for us. Alcohol is not healthy for us. We want to stay away from those things. Teas, 
um, coffee, caffeine, those things interfere with us being rejuvenated and restored in good health. What are some of the ways we can get more physical activity? Paul says, do you not know that those run in a race all run, but only one receives a prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. So what we discover is that, yes, you can take care of your body temple with the exercises, healthy food, sleep. Uh, you can have a positive outlook. You can do all those things, and that will be great for this life. That will not help you at all achieve the afterlife. It will have no benefit to you for the afterlife. In order to have the afterlife, there is the other part of running the spiritual race. And that, going to Hebrews 12, 1, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So the race that's set before us is at birth until death. And we encounter all kinds of obstacles in life. And we need a connection with God and His saving grace to help us as we encounter the different things that we will experience in life. Um, but as we accept the free gift of salvation through faith and as we let Christ be the center of our life, then we have the hope of life beyond this life. Did Jesus get a lot of exercise? We can see in John chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, that uh, Jesus, he went all over Galilee, through Samaria. We know that he went up to Tyre and Sidon. Um, so Jesus got a lot of exercise. On my pedometer, I try to log in at least 10,000 steps a day. But Jesus probably logged in more like 30,000 steps a day. So we know that Jesus got good exercise. How can I improve my life spiritually? Acts 12, 17 those who are more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica because they receive the word with all readiness and they examine the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. So one of the ways to do that is to read God's word and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you into the truth and set it in your heart. Mark 135 is another example. Jesus, our example, in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and he departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. So Jesus was a prayer warrior, and because Jesus prayed, Jesus had victory over the devil, and you can too. Luke 4, 16, Jesus went, uh, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. It's important to have a family of faith and to worship with them and to benefit them by sharing your experiences and encouraging them and praying for them and they'll do the same for you. And as you have that fellowship together, you will be built up in the body of Christ. Mark 10, 30, 45. Even the Son of Man did not come to serve, to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So our lives should be unselfish and we should be serving others. That should be our focus. To be like Jesus, love the community, have a compassion for them, and serve them. And our last text, Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, once you have the connection with Christ and you experience that more abundant life that Jesus came to give you, and as you're taking care of your body temple, all these things are starting to come together. But then you discover that other people don't have the benefit that you have. And Jesus said, go make disciples of other people. Share with them the benefits of having a connection with me and allow them to participate in the free gift of salvation and the more abundant life that I give, want to give them now. So in closing, I just want to encourage you that... Uh, Get active. Take care of your body. Would you like to ask God to reveal some ways that you can incorporate more positive activities in your life? Ask him, say, Lord, how can I have more positive things in my life that I might glorify you? So that is where we'll finish it on activity and hope to hear from you. Text in once in a while and say what you're doing. Uh, if, if you're a runner or a walker, whatever you like to do, just we'd love to hear back from our yeah, viewers. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. We're going to turn it back over to Chef Miguel and Emily. Where are we at in the process over here? Okay. Oh, we have quite a workout, eh, Emily? <laughs> I <laughs> think. <laughs> Your mic. I don't know if you guys have been doing this at home while Pastor Benson was talking, but we've been going the whole time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's been good. So, uh, shouldn't the window pen there? 
and okay. you stretch it and stretch it and what happened she really worked out work it out for at least 10 minutes there so she did well and uh yeah oh i tore it, it okay so better. i stretch it mine you see i stretch it and stretch it and it stay so i can see it's getting more transparent so i can see myself you can see through okay right. perfect so it's ready so this is what we want to get okay it's a window pen um if you don't get it if you break it too easily that's mean you need to keep working on the dough okay that's very important to develop the gluten that's what we want perfect okay so now we're going to wait for uh 18 uh, uh 15 ounces okay so go ahead cut it i uh, good so 15 ounces that's the the um the Had size for the pizza dough okay okay so if you don't have a scale just Mm, just say, oh, that's, that's, that should be fine. <laughs> but 15 ounces, okay? And you want to make sure that the top always is nice and smooth, okay? Because you want to trap the, the CO2 there, okay? So you don't make it very, sh uh, very, very smooth like this, okay? So then after this, we take some olive oil. And you want to make sure that you lubricate the top because it, you don't want it to dry with the air, okay? And you put a plastic cap on top. So you have it? This is it. Okay, 15. perfect. 15 ounces. Put it there. What did Ship. you do with the olive oil? You okay. made it really... Yes. How did you make it so nice on top? Okay, so you, you take this here like this. Uh -huh. You stretch it. Oh. Just like that. And here. And you just bring it on the bottom there. Just like that. Okay. See? And just make like it. Like a sculptor. Yeah. Okay, just press uh, now this side. You want to press the side there? Yeah? Come on, this side. <laughs> you, you take ex practice. If you want to do it on the, on the table, you can do it on the table. Huh? The same thing. You can just do it like this, okay? On the table. Oh, and press it down. You see, it you before. just bring it down like this, okay? Just, yes, on the other side. Awesome. Great. Oh, okay. That's great. It's way easier and then on you the put table. some, you want to put some oil there so we, to prevent. A dry, a dry course is uh, when the dough dry on top. It's really keep uh, the process, the rising process, Oops. and uh, so you have a hard time to develop and to rise, and it's it's just it's just not nice. Okay, and it's just, just not the top. Very pretty. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. You have one more there. You want to finish oh. it? Yeah, sure. I have some left over there, so I can probably join you on this one. Oh, that's way too much. Twenty ounces. <laughs> okay. That's go ahead. Still. Okay, one thing, <laughs> one thing is, is, is good to not tear the dough. Oh. It's best to cut it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, okay, let's do the same process again. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay. 15.4. Okay. okay, perfect. Yeah. So, okay, so you just take this and blend it. Nice. <laughs> it, it's perfect. That's a total. It's like a. It's look like a. a, a <laughs> what is this? Oh, okay. It does okay, kind of look like it on yes, the bottom. Perfect. Okay. So you put a little bit of olive oil there, and that's it. And we put a okay. plastic cap on top. Go ahead. With the olive oil, thanks. And we have it. So now the next process will be. Ooh. Now we're going to shape. Um, the pizza. Okay, so uh, actually this year you can actually uh, put it in the refrigerator for at least up to two, three days in the refrigerator covered. Otherwise, you can put in the freezer. Okay? okay. If you don't want to use all, you, have too, you make too much dough, you don't want to use everything. So you put in a Ziploc bag, put in the freezer. Okay. And then uh, remove it from the freezer in the refrigerator and uh, for 24 hours in advance. And then make sure before you, p uh, you use your dough, Leave it two hours room temperature, okay? Two to three hours. The reason why, if it's cold, it, would, it will not rise in the oven. It will be difficult to stretch it up. The okay. gluten needs to be relaxed, okay? So you need to put it uh, two hours in, in outside room temperature, okay? okay? Even this, after you put it in the fridge, what I will do, I put now, it's done. I'll put it in the refrigerator, and um, the next day I will use it. But I will pull it out two hours before. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Okay? Awesome. So it can it can last in the in the freezer for up to a month in the freezer, okay? Okay. So I'm now I have some dough I'm ready for you. Oh. Okay. This is um, I, this is a two days 
dough, okay? This is a two days one. Okay. Let me take. Okay, we need also our pan, pizza pan. Okay. I always put some oil on top. We're going to put some cornmeal. The cornmeal is just to give it oh. like a nice rustic uh, texture, flavor, and everything. You know, yeah, I don't have a yes. pizza stone, so the cornmeal we do it uh, kind of a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> okay. So now, this is the process that is important to put flour. Don't be uh, bashful on the flour. Put enough flour on the bottom. You see that? some flour there and some flour on top. Okay? Okay. Let's put some here. Put more. <laughs> Very well. You're doing good so far. So more? far, so good. Yes, that's fine. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now you want, what you want to do, Emily, you want to. And this is the part where you don't want to uh, manipulate the dough too much. Okay. Um, and work the dough can because that would work okay right. so now we want to press it down like this in the center only the center making a nice shape so you turn it to to make sure the the shape stay the same uh, you see i don't i don't going to use i don't pressing the edge out okay so because i want a nice edge in my pizza okay so i just press it down like this so good it's good uh, okay it's press it down a little bit yeah, stretch it at the same time. Perfect. You stretch it as uh -huh. you press it down. Okay, stretch it as you press it down. Do you ever like flip it in the air? Uh, <laughs> bad experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you want to try, you want to try. <laughs> no, the only other time I've really made pizza like this uh -huh. was like years ago at uh -huh. Camp Winnipeg yeah. in um, Massachusetts. Yeah. And you and, you, and you we we would take it up and we would. Yeah, we're going to do it. I never flipped it. No, though. we're going to do, do, do it. Too? Okay, so you take oh. you <gasps> took the knuckle there and you want to stretch it, okay? Just like that. <laughs> so stretch it on each side. Oh yeah, I remember this. Okay? <gasps> oh no. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so you take the knuckle like this? Yeah. And you okay? And you stretch it. Okay. Okay? Just like that. I mean, how big are we going for? Uh you can make it as uh, bigger than this, uh the whole the side of the pen because you, you're going to because you're going to stretch back, okay? I'm gonna make a hole in it. Uh, make sure you don't. This make is a hole. really well needed. Look at the transparency. Yeah, of this. this is really yes. This is like window pen yeah. altogether. Yeah. So you see this? Perfect. Well, wow. I mean, yours fills the pan. I guess I needed to. Well, can I do it more? Yeah, you can do it more. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> this is scary. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry, if you break it, it's okay. It's not a big deal. We can do it again. I have more dough there, so I want you to, yeah, don't be afraid to try it. All right, all right. In the meantime, what I'm doing, I'm going to put the tomato sauce here on okay. top. Oh, first, there is many, many other ways. Okay, I'll, I'll show you one way to do this. Before I put the tomato sauce, I have some garlic and, and, and extra virgin olive oil here. I'm going to brush it on top just to give you some idea what you can do on the pizza. You see that? Oh. oh, that smells so good. Yes. Oh, it smells great, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's incredible. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, you have it. This I mean, is it's excellent. Getting bigger. This is incredible. This is the best pizza I've ever seen ever. <laughs> oh, man, this is incredible. Okay, so now <laughs> you can fix this. You can. Okay, why don't you use the um, use the use this one? The Alfredo the, sauce? Yeah, the Alfredo sauce. Okay. Kind of. Okay, just okay. Push it on. I put this one already in. Okay, and so just all over? Yes, I'm you good? can put all over. And okay. me, I put I do this one here. Okay. So this is so you, you see what sauce? I do? I take a whole little full and yeah. just stir it just like that until you get a nice consistency. Mm. Beautiful. See that? Mm-hmm. Switch a little bit more. Do you usually use this whole thing, yeah? Yeah, you can use everything. Okay. And yours, you're going to add, you're going to do, okay, uh, for the Alfredo, I have something, I have this meat that I, mm. um, it's sausage from the, uh, from the nature's nest. So okay. I thought it would be a good idea to put some of this, okay? So we're going to slice it down and put this one in. Awesome. Okay, okay. if you can see in the camera, I don't know where to go. Is it this one? Okay, this one. 
Okay, this is the sausage for the nature's nest, so we're going to use this one and uh, to make for the alfredo. I think it goes well with it, and we're going to use some artichoke for you also, okay? Mm. Artichoke on that. Okay. And me are going to work on the Hawaiian pizza. Okay, sounds good. What was this one called? Uh, this is a, a, a white pizza, okay? Called oh yeah, okay. Yeah, white pizza. So let me slice this down for you, all those things. Oh, okay. thank you. Does it need more or no? Is no, okay? it's, yeah, it's fine, it's good. Oh, okay. Great, right. beautiful, beautiful. Now, uh, yeah. go ahead, put some of this. I will put some cheese, a little bit of cheese first for yours. Oh, okay. A little bit, and then we put cheese on top also. Now, this Am is I vegan cheese, right? Yeah, this is uh, Dea yeah. cheese. Dea? Uh, yes. Okay. It melts very well, this one. Okay, some sprinkle on top nicely like this. I mean, how much do you usually put? I like, will put just a little bit for now, and then we put a little bit more on top. So is that enough? Yeah, that's, now? that should be fine. Okay. Okay. Then I actually, now you're going to put the meat here. Okay, All so right. put some of that. And me, I'm working on the uh, Hawaiian pizza. There is some customers of mine love the Hawaiian pizza. They come every Thursday <laughs> uh, to have Hawaiian pizza. That's awesome. <laughs> Literally, they love the Hawaiian pizza. So uh, it must be we must be doing something good then. So the pizza, <laughs> so we're going to put some, a lot of pineapple, and uh, we put some bacon strips in this, uh, bacon strips. I, I want, it's okay. veggie bacon strips, everybody. <laughs> veggie <laughs> this bacon. one for the nature's nest also, we have it there, the veggie bacon strip, and we use it for the Hawaiian pizza, okay? Cool. Beautiful, this is awesome, Yo, Alfredo, look at that. <laughs> I'll put up more, nice, you don't want to be, okay, perfect. <laughs> and now you can put some artichoke here. Where, oh, okay. You can open some of them like this. You j can, can, you just can just put my hands Yes, you can just put your hand there. Okay. Ooh, okay. And now uh, we can add also some uh, green onions, scallions. Mm. Okay, we can put mm -hmm. some scallions on top. I think we give, we give a great flavor and okay, also that looks amazing. a good look also for it. I mean, pineapple and onions, man, that's, that's really good. Yes. But for your Alfredo, I'm going to use this, okay? For okay. your Alfredo, you can use this one. Okay, so then after that, I you like can put some of this, okay? This and mushroom, you're going to put some mushroom also. No, you oh. can put a little bit more. Okay. Okay, okay for, my, for me, I'm going to add uh, the bacon strips. Okay. For my Hawaiian. I can't wait to try this pizza. I know. Do you I'm like a, a savory pizza? What? Do you like savory? Uh, savory? A sweet, sweet pizza. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. Like, both. like I like it with pineapple and tomatoes. Yeah. And there I like it with savory. I don't there, know. There is one of my assistants uh, yeah. make a, a cherries, cherry pizza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember this one? Yeah, but I've never tried that one. I keep, I <laughs> yes. kept forgetting to, oh, or man. like it would, when, when you guys would make it, yeah. it would always like, Gone by yes, the time I got it was on my favorite, liked but it. everybody like it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then after this, I'm going to add on this a bell pepper. Okay. On the Hawaiian. You can put a little bit, little bit more mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. And the bell pepper. You see this? This beautiful wow, color. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Yes. And. Uh, <sighs> It's not because it's not a, a pizza. You know something? Most, uh, every place, many times when I go to eat a pizza, uh -huh. they don't put herbs in their pizza. Most people don't put herbs mm -hmm. in their pizza. Right. It's, 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 uh, it's just it's vegetable, uh, barely vegetables, and a lot of cheese, and uh -huh. no, nothing else, no herbs. So we're going to change that today. We're going to Great. revolutionize the whole pizza <laughs> market. Okay, yes. so I have some basil on top. No, okay, so you can put what, uh, what else, else can you one? put? The green onion is for you. Yeah. Oh yes, take, please. Take, take green onion. Okay. Some herbs, just like that. Mm. And we're going to add also some rosemary. Oh. And go ahead, you can put some herbs on, on yours also. Okay. What do you recommend for the? Uh, you can put some rosemary and basil. Okay. Can I grab more onions? I'm yes, sorry. you can take care of all things. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. okay. Look at this, this is so beautiful. And I'm going to put a pinch of um, Eau de Provence on top. Eau de Provence, or you, what you oh can that. do if you don't have Eau de Provence, you can take some oregano, dry oregano, dry 
uh, thyme, dry was, um, not was my, but dry basil, make a mixture of it Sometimes. and just sprinkle okay. on top, okay? And okay. That's, that's, that's the same thing. That's really good also. And uh, there's something else in this thing. What, what else do you think Rosemary, can go on it? Do you oh, am I going to do the Italian, or er, the, what, yeah, what's that called? Yeah, you can put the Herde there. And or I'm going to put some uh, ear uh, pepperoncini. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, on top of it. Okay. It gives you the acidity, and at the same time, it gives like a sharpness to the pineapple, okay? Mm. That's beautiful. Sounds you can good. put some oil, oil also there if you like to. Some what? This is oh, um, pepperoncini on top, oh, you yeah. can put some. Okay, this is it now. Uh, can you tell? Can you see this, guys? Look at this pizza. And now we're going to put something else. We're going to add some of the basil sauce. Just a little bit drizzle of um, virgin Ooh. olive oil. Uh, and basil sauce and basil blend and you can do the same thing and the last things are going to add is the cheese oh. <laughs> yes that's beautiful this is their cheese and it will melt nicely i can't wait to see i never tried not anything in this oven the pizza so hopefully that's well <laughs> it's a convection i usually don't use a convection for my pizza but i i just hope all is well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm afraid it goes good. Okay. I'm sure it'll be good. Okay. All right. So Perfect. then cheese, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, and we got put mm. some little bit of this. Thank you. Green sauce. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. And salt. I always put a little bit of salt because all the veggies have no salt in it. So I always always put a pinch of salt on my on my pizza. Okay. And before we bake this one, we're going to make another pizza. Oh. Uh, uh, we're going great. to do a Mediterranean pizza. Oh, that's my favorite. Oops. Okay, wow, a Mediterranean I'm pizza. I'm going to have a thick crust over here. Oh, this is beautiful. I didn't quite go all the way. No, this edge. is incredible. Is Your pizza is like the best pizza I ever see ever. Yeah, I, I w ditto. That yours is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the Mediterranean pizza, this is one of my favorite pizza. Uh -huh. I really like it. Me too. Ah, and now, uh, if you, mm -hmm. this is some garlic. Oh, Just thanks. Garlic. Yeah, yeah, okay, yes. definitely. Just a little garlic. Okay, so mm. I just want to stretch this. Mm -hmm. Do you like to take a, a pizza pan for me and put some cornmeal on top? Mm -hmm. I, yes. There's the bottom. Oh, I see it. Where's the, the cornmeal? cornmeal is, uh, where's the cornmeal? The cornmeal is here. I know it's here because we I just know, use we it. Just <laughs> what? Where did it go? Ah, it's here. I, I put it all the oh. way there. Okay. <laughs> it's gone. All right. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Go ahead, put the tomato sauce on top. Okay. Just put it there. All right. Excuse me. And we can, you can also, um, if you want to make a thicker course on the edge, you can hold it down like this. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, put tomato sauce, take a whole, a whole full, completely full pan there. Uh, you can unleash it, huh? Hmm, scary. Okay, I'm going to put some olive oil there. Oh, nice. Ah, basil actually. Okay, go okay. ahead. Put, put another, uh, just half of this. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so hold it. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Put <laughs> a bit of on there. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, good. So now you can go ahead and uh, we can put, uh, it's a Mediterranean pizza, so it needs to be Mediterranean. Okay, so we'll go ahead, put some, um, how do you call this, uh, mushrooms. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, just sprinkle this on. <laughs> That's good. Mushroom, and we're going to add also um yeah we can Peppers. put some um uh, uh, eggplant 
Okay. And um, don't why don't we much. put some artichoke also? Yeah, you can put some. Did you say? Artichoke. Oh, eggplant. Cool. Uh, not right. artichoke. I mean um, asparagus? asparagus. Yes. Okay. Right. Some eggplant asparagus. Okay. It's nice. This is Beautiful. awesome. And you want to make sure it's evenly spread. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell the difference between this and the mushrooms. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Great. And I'm going to add some bell pepper. Okay. Wow. And go ahead and put some uh, artichoke. Ah, uh, I mean asparagus. Asparagus. Good. <laughs> some bell pepper. I have some onions. Look at this. This is this so is beautiful. This is amazing. Normally when I think of Mediterranean pizza, I just think of like, well, maybe that's more Italian. I guess I was thinking of like... What you're thinking? Um, just like mozzarella and tomatoes or yes. like... Yeah. I don't know. Yes. This is amazing. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is fresh and inviting. So many vegetables in it. Yeah, it and is. Uh, now you're going to put a pinch of salt. You want to put... Okay. And you can put the spinach also, some spinach. I usually put the oh, spinach yeah. on top, on the bottom first. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So I forgot. But that's okay. Some spinach. Look at that. This is so yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. So green, so nice. Oops. Okay, so that's good. And uh, go ahead and put some calamata olives. Mm. I'm going to put some fresh this <laughs> here. <laughs> some basil. My goodness. <laughs> this yep. is this is great, huh? Mm -hmm. This is a it's good, beautiful. Some fresh basil, just like wow. that. Wow. And rosemary. Now we change the mindset for pizza. Hopefully, people understand. Um, pizza is not just mm. cheese and tomato sauce. You can put veggies, and you can put some fresh herbs in it, and it gives so much flavor. Beautiful. Now you can put your some cheese. Yes, you can put your cheese. Wow. Then put some of the basil sauce okay, and the cheese. That's beautiful. <sighs> That's beautiful. Yep. Never going to go back to regular pizza again <laughs> yes. with the same, yes. the same t taste or yeah, idea after yeah. this, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, the same taste. <laughs> 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 yes. I guess cheese is addictive, so the people don't mind the same taste every time. That's true. Yeah. That's Okay, but I'll put a little flavor. bit more. Okay. okay, so now we put it in the oven. Okay. And now uh, it's we turn to uh, Vicky Griffin for uh, the half talk. And now uh, we take about uh, 500 degree for 10 to 15 minutes. I don't know how long we take there, but 500 <laughs> degree out. hot. 500, okay. Okay, okay. I like to... Uh, Tell you, wait, wouldn't that look good? That looks super delicious. I have not seen a Mediterranean pizza before, but I, I definitely want to get the, the recipe on that and do that. Um, Nadine Larcher normally presents, and she did ask me a favor. She will not be here tonight. We have Vicki Griffin. She'll be covering for her. But Nadine is doing a great uh, research project. And what it is is you can go online and you can see this flyer. This flyer tells about a free opportunity for you. It's a 12-week plant-based diet program for health and weight loss. So who's able to participate in that? If you're overweight, uh, for those who are more technical and medical, if you have a BMI of 25 or higher, you would qualify. You have to be 18 or older. And uh, you have to have a primary care physician and the ability to access Zoom meetings. So what it is is you would come in and... She would uh, assess you and get your BMI and weight and all those kinds of things. Uh, they would give you instructions. Uh, one of the benefits is that you would learn how to cook with Chef Larche. He would be doing some virtual classes on how to cook healthy, plant-based diet, um, just like you're watching here tonight. So that would be an awesome benefit. Uh, Nadine would be doing some health talks, and she's very good at what she does. Uh, so you'll get a chance to get your cholesterol tested and there'll be online group meetings where you can share each week at the group as they talk about uh, and ask questions and get answers and stuff like that with uh, Nadine who's the nurse who's working on her doctor of nurse practitioner. She graduates in August and uh, this is an opportunity for her to get her research done to complete her program. 
Now, if you're interested, you want to check the link and check that, and she'll have a phone number there that you can call her or text her or email her at. Uh, and uh, so we hope that a lot of you do that. She's looking for about 32 subjects, and uh, she's already starting to fill up, so you want to jump on while you still can. But uh, right now, we got something really exciting. Uh, you know, I just was thinking, Vicki, that here we are. We're dealing with Italian food, and who would be better to talk about health <laughs> than an Italian girl like Vicki Griffin? So we are glad you're coming on board. Just a little introduction on Vicki. Uh, she has a master's degree in nutrition, human nutrition, and she also has one in public administration. Now, Vicki is also a member of the American College of Nutrition, uh, and I can tell you that she lectures at medical schools across the nation, and she is a great authority in this subject. So we are just so glad that you're here tonight. Uh, you're coming in virtual from your home studios. Uh, you are also in charge of uh, your program online that you have. I know your lectureship uh, that you do your things in, and it's called, help me out, guys. I just re No, Balanced Living is one of the produces. Vicki, Lifestyle Wait, Matters, right? Lifestyle Matters. So you just go online and you can Google Lifestyle Matters, Vicki Griffin, and you can get to her website and see all the resources that she has. But welcome, Vicki. We're so excited. Uh, a little introduction. You know, coming around Christmas time, I ate a little bit too much, and I, I just have some weight around. And you are going to talk about how to move beyond the idea that, you know what, I need to do something and how to actually make it happen. So I'm really excited about your presentation. So welcome. Let's hear what you have to say. Thank you very much, Pastor Bob. And as I was watching these amazing pizzas being assembled, I was thinking, mangiamo, <laughs> let's eat. So thank you for that, uh, Chef Miguel, Emily, and your, your message, Pastor, tonight was very compelling because a lot of what you were sharing with us, the ideas, we love to start these things, but in Ecclesiastes verse uh, chapter 7, verse 8, it says, the end of a thing is better than the beginning. And so tonight, my short talk is about habits that last. So when we make a decision to do something new, when we make operational something that we know and we want to do, there are many starts and stops and stays, and sometimes there are some stumbles. So tonight, I'd like to just share some brief tips on habits that last. It's like Jackie Gleason said, he said the second day of a diet is always the best because by then you're done with it. And uh, what he said tongue in cheek is really true. Dieting seeds the, uh, sows the seeds of its own destruction. So a lifestyle plan, a pattern of eating that becomes a part of you is really important and including the movement and all those other pieces. I'm very, very thankful for what you shared tonight. So I'm going to activate um, PowerPoint right now. We're gonna see a few slides together, talk them over and uh, wish everyone a blessing as we, okay, so I just need to share the screen and are we seeing it? Can somebody let me know if you can see the screen? Pastor Benson, are you seeing the PowerPoint? Yes, we are seeing the PowerPoint. Pardon me? We are seeing the PowerPoint. Oh, okay, thank you. Hold on just a second, please, sorry. Okay, yeah, we are PowerPoint. All right, good, because I've done whole programs with where I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So tonight we're talking about habits that last, strength, through the storm, finishing strong. That's what we want to do. And we're gonna to start tonight with a brief story. Some of you, uh, I'm sure Pastor Benson has heard of John Stephen Aquari. John Stephen Aquari was a marathoner in the 1968 Olympics. Uh, he was sent all the way from Tanzania. He was a very seasoned marathoner and he was competing with 75 75 marathoners in the 1968 Olympics. Well, he had not accounted for the, um, the altitude change in Mexico City. So just a half a mile into the race, he developed some very severe cramping and it was really limiting him. It was starting to damage his muscle 
And then in the jostling, there were 75 starters in this race, but only 54 finished. But John Stephen Aquari, in spite of this pain, he was actually one of them. In the jostling for, for a better place running, he was knocked over, his shoulder was damaged, his knee was dislocated. He, in his own words, Here's the picture of him running that race. That's a screenshot I took. You can go on YouTube and see uh, see wonderful videos of him. But he actually ran or limped this entire race. The winner of the marathon competed. He completed the race in about two hours and twenty minutes. One full hour later, John Stephen Aquari was still moving forward very painfully very limited, but he didn't stop. In his own words, in his own words, he said, I never thought of stopping. Here he is. Here's a picture of him at night. Cars were behind him. The stands were largely empty. Only a few reporters stayed when they found out that someone was still running. And he just had this marvelous attitude of pressing through to the finish. And in his own words, he said this, he said, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to start this race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish it. What a remarkable story. So uh, starting is wonderful. Finishing is the most important thing. And I, I always think about how Jesus, he came to us uh, to finish what he has begun in us. And that's something for us to remember. Paul himself, when he was sitting at the end of his ministry in the Mamertine prison in a dungeon, chained in a dark place, he said this, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So you may be thinking, well, I really do want to get on a solid exercise program. I want more dietary fiber. It's good for the mind. It's good for the body the gut microbiome. The good news for you and I today is that you and I are designed for renewal, recovery, and restoration. Your brain is constantly being rewired as we think new thoughts, practice a healing lifestyle, and exercise trust in God. So we need to remember that practice doesn't just make perfect. Practice makes progress. In 1 Corinthians 9.24, it says, don't you know that uh, in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize. Well, that's not, that's not the way it is with you and I. We all have a chance to win, and we don't have to get first place. We just have to finish. So Paul says, run in such a way as to take the prize. And that scripture was quoted by our pastor this evening. So how do we choose? How, what path do we choose in order to stay forward, to get forward and stay forward? Someone once said, Beginnings are wonderful, endings are great, but it's in the middle that we get in a muddle. So how do we set a course, know that where we wanna go and stay with it? This is what we're looking at tonight. The Bible says, ponder the path of your feet, let all your ways be settled, established, secure. So usually we begin with lists and a list is a good thing. A list is a good starting point to create a new template for growth and change. It's good for us. It helps us organize our choices and priorities for daily price practice. But if, you, if you're anything like me, you, you, we put that grody picture on the refrigerator. We put that list on the mirror. And it doesn't take very long to forget that it's there. We learn to ignore it. So lists are good, but they don't actually do the work of internalizing the, um, the priorities. So even your best list can become a tyrant until it becomes a part of you. But with time and practice, this list can become a joy, not a job to live those life building principles. So this information now that I'm gonna briefly share with you is from a really interesting book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. James Clear was a young uh, baseball player in school. The uh, the high school scouts were looking at him to get him into the leagues. He was very excellent. Well, he had a tragic accident. Uh, he was hit in the face with a baseball bat and it, it, it smashed his face. He was in the hospital for three months 
And he literally, he had brain damage and he had to learn in very, very small increments how to talk, how to walk, how to write, how to, how to, how to navigate his body, even just getting up from the bed and going to the bathroom. So he had to basically learn everything all over again. And he wrote this book, Atomic Habits, because over time, not only did he recover, but he became a college all-star athlete. So he describes goal-oriented change. In other words, I want to lose 50 pounds and I've set my mind on it, or I want to read a book a month. It's a goal. I don't like reading, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to get there. I'm going to read so many chapters a day, or I don't like to, to eat well. I don't like exercise, but I've got to lose this weight. So I'm just going to knuckle through to get off this med medication, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to make it happen. Now that is being focused on the goal. And it's a good thing to have goals. In fact, there was a woman in Pennsylvania who used to jog past a homeless uh, shelter every day. And there were men outside having their morning cigarettes and she would greet them. Well, by and by, she started inviting them to, to jog a little bit with her, run with her. They took an interest, they started to learn. She got them gym clothes from a, a local shop and they formed a little team. And before you know it, they had accomplished a goal. Some of them, the first goal they'd ever accomplished in their life, they ran a 5K. So I'm not saying that it's not good to be goal oriented. It can be transformational, but more often than not, because we've not learned to internalize the whole mindset that goes with that goal, once we reach the goal, we fall off. So the process is, are the steps that I take to get there, to reach that goal. We want them to be reasonable, realizable. We want to chunk them in pieces so that, so that we have a process that is stable. But the other kind of change is identity-based change. So identity-based change doesn't say, I'm gonna read a book a month. Identity-based change says, I'm going to become a reader or I'm, Instead of saying, I'm going to lose 50 pounds if it kills me because I want to get off these meds, identity-based change says, I'm going to become a fit person. It requires an internal change. It's a change of heart. So you are actually becoming new from within, and it's not based on the outcome. So what that means in terms of the daily change is that instead of, let's say, pastor said he had, he sets a goal of 10,000 steps a day. Well, I have a, a steps goal every day too. There are days I don't meet that goal, but I meet some of it. So when I don't meet the entire goal, I still have the concept in my mind that I'm adding to that identity. No, I didn't have a chance. I was in meetings, but I got 2000 steps in today and that's better than nothing. So instead of failing every time I don't reach that exact goal, I'm adding to my identity and it's a very positive experience. So as these positive choices become internalized and they become a part of who we are, they become automatic. And that's what we want. We don't have to consult our feelings about nutritious eating, exercising, social relationships, having a schedule, getting to bed on time, all of these things become habitual. It becomes a pattern. They become core values, not just beliefs. There's nothing that's been shared tonight that you don't believe, that you haven't heard perhaps in one form or another, and that you don't agree with, that you don't disagree with. However, agreeing with something and it becoming a core belief are two different things. And that's going to make the difference between success and failure. That way, if you fall, you make a mistake, you know how to get up and try again, because this is part of who you are now. And you're not going to define yourself by the occasional mistake. You're going to learn from your mistakes. Pick up yourself and start again. Successful people are not mistake free. They just refuse to give up. Your values now have become a life not a list. And that's what Christ offers us. He offers us a new life, a new orientation, a new attitude, a new way of seeing people and him and the goals that we have in our lives that he has chosen for us. We want to internalize and practice. Practice doesn't just make perfect. It makes progress. So we want to practice those healthy choices morning, noon, and night. I love this from Atomic Habits. James said, it is so easy to overestimate 
the importance of one defining moment and underestimate the value of making small improvements on a daily basis. See, we don't make TV programs about very small increments over long periods of time because they do take a long time. They're not spectacular, but those are the ones that last. God has blessed us with fresh air, exercise, and rest as antidotes to many mental, physical, and spiritual maladies. And here's what we need. We need determination. We need prayer and a plan. But your body and brain are going to daily respond to those healthful lifestyle changes. And probably the greatest miracle miracle of all is endurance. It's that determination. We give up easily. But God wants to exchange our wishbone for backbone. Attitude isn't anything. It's everything. So, yes, there's a reason why we are where we are today. Some of us have had incredible challenges in life. We've had disabilities or limitations. We have not had opportunities or we've made choices uh, that we're very ashamed of or we have habits that have become addictions. What happens is is that what begins as a comfort or a curiosity soon becomes a compulsion, then a clinical condition, which is what Nadine will be working with, then a chain around the neck. And so what these battles that we have with self are no paper tiger, but the Bible says that the weapons that we fight with uh, are not fleshly, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. So God will give you the initiative. He will give you the determination, but you have to make the choice to make it your priority. And then you have to practice. Expect challenges. Successful people are not mistake-free. They just refuse to give up. So remember your reasons why you want to do this positive thing. Recognize the negative attitudes, thoughts, and feelings that are derailing you and replace them with promises from the word of God. He is powerful and he says he will strengthen you with power in the inner man. Refuse to dwell on the mistakes and bumps along the way. We have stops, we have starts, we have steps. We have to go through the learning process. I love this. This is what I call the pulley principle. Not that I have, Paul said this, not that I have already attained or I'm already mature or perfected, but I press on. We have to press into Christ, press through the trouble, press through the new learning experience and press on to victory. But it's not just us pressing. It says here that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has laid hold of me. So while I press, he pulls, you know, change is difficult and it is painful But staying in bad habits is painful also. Either way, there's light at the end of the tunnel. With bad habits, the light is a train. With Christ, the light, and with positive change, that light is Christ. He says, "What one thing I do, Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of that upward call of God in Christ. Jesus. Amen. And that is my prayer for me. It's my prayer for you. And I thank you for your time and attention tonight. Okay. I just want to want to say thank you, Vicki. That was fantastic. It was very encouraging. I really enjoyed it. This is what you shared. Uh, I want to encourage you once again to go to Lifestyle Matters website. Look at uh, what Vicki has there. She's got a wealth of depth and breadth. It's not just about nutrition. As you could tell tonight, it was also motivational about how to address um, the different challenges and making decisions and sticking to it. And I would encourage you to consider inviting her to speak to your community group or to your church. It doesn't have to be of any Seventh-day Adventist denomination. It's for any denomination. Uh, she does do speaking out in the public. So anyway, but now, thank you so much, Vicki. We're going to turn back, and now I believe the... Uh, cooking is completed and Miguel and Emily have got the pizzas here on the counter and they are ready to chop it up and sample it out so we'll turn it over to you guys okay Emily how do, does it look awesome and I, I like to do something like this to put some pieces of basil after I finish just to make it pretty okay go ahead tell some of here okay let's see this the mic, your mic is off. Okay. 
So this year was uh, the Mediterranean pizza, correct? Yeah. And that's the Alfredo. Mm -hmm. Can you see Alfredo pizza? And uh, we have here um, Hawaiian pizza. Okay, so let's cut that. Okay. This is you so the excited. crispiness there. <laughs> this is really good. I know. If you've been doing this at home, doesn't it smell so good? It smells really good here. It's incredible. <laughs> perfect piece and this is what we have here you see this nice delicious mm. pizza can you see here Steaming. Let's see it. so good so the convection oven worked well <laughs> it was we have more pizza in the oven look at this if the camera can go in the oven there C can you can you put press there and we have some more here. We'll bring it over and this is a four season. The four season has the artichoke and mushrooms and asparagus and what else? Um, I don't know. I forgot. Eggplant. Eggplant. Yeah. Yes. Tomatoes. And we have Kalamata a cheese olives. pizza for those who just like cheese pizza. We have, but I put, we put some fresh herb and everything in it. And that's the cheese pizza. Okay, so we are done, and I hope you will follow this recipe. It's easy to follow. It took us about 10 minutes, 10-15 uh, minutes to make this, this dough. And uh, let us know uh, if, you l if you have a good experience or bad experience, and uh, we'll help you. And please send us some picture of this pizza. I really want to see your, your pizza. All right, Emily? Yeah, yes. that would be awesome. That would be awesome. All right. Um, just, boy, doesn't that look delicious? Looking forward to tasting a little bit of that. I do want to say that uh, we are doing our next segment next month. Our date on that is going to be April the 5th. April the 5th. And uh, there is um, a focus that's going to be on the Caribbean. Caribbean, how do you say that, Chef? Les Antilles. <laughs> what is it? La Caraïbe. <laughs> oh, did you change it? No, I say Les Antilles, French Antilles. Yeah. Is it uh, w the Carib Caribbean jackfruit? Oh, and okay, so that's Jamaica. <laughs> sure. Maybe some of Martinique, my country, okay. and Jamaica. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to come experience some of that, you want to be sure and tune in. Invite your friends. Um, if you have any questions, you can just text them in or email them in. Our producer will grab that. Okay, you guys want yeah, to try put, this? Yeah, post it on the Facebook, and they can pick it off of that. Oh, yeah. So, all right. You ready to try some of this? Mm -hmm. huh? Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely try <laughs> some of that. We'll definitely try yes. that. Awesome. So do we want to go ahead and turn them loose? In time to question well, answer? Yeah, we'll turn you loose. So those of you who are needing to get on with the other things in life, you can go ahead and take off. Those of you who want to stick by and ask some questions and get some answers, you're welcome to stay by. We'll stay on the air for a little bit longer. Um, so...
some very nice pizza. So, we're not going to have a very long Q&A session. I've got to get in front of the camera, wherever that is. Oh, I, I see back. myself now. That's good. Back. Uh, we only have a couple questions today. Um, I know some new questions just came in. So the first question today was, where can we find chef's pizza dough recipe and tomato sauce, tomato sauce recipe? The pizza recipe was just put on the website. That's www.campcuisine.org. The pizza dough recipe was just put there yesterday. We've got some topping ideas, and uh, so that's great. And then we have our pizza sauce recipe, tomato sauce recipe from before. Um, a few episodes ago, I think in our first season, we did some something with tomato sauce, with pasta. And so that recipe is there. So you can find that there. Uh, the next question. Yes, we do this monthly. Um, we do this monthly. Our next is on, next episode is on April 5th. We'll be back here live, of course. Um... Deanna asks, was the pizza sauce homemade? So yes. yes. Yes, it was. And she wants to know, can you briefly explain how it was made? Okay, so we use, basically what I use, uh, the, um, the tomato sauce that we did for the cooking class, I blend it with uh, uh, a, a straight tomato sauce to give the thickness to it. Okay, and that's it. So I would take like two cups of uh, regular marinara sauce, the homemade one, and put some tomato sauce, uh, the thick puree tomato sauce, and mix it together. So you give it like a consistency, so you won't run all, all over the pizza. Okay. 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 So that's really interesting. Um, once again, you can find all the resources, all the recipes on the Camp Cuisine website, and we've uh, we've got some information about Nadine's uh, health project that she's doing. That's really interesting. That's on the Facebook page. So you can find all of that on our website and on the Facebook page. So we'll see you soon next week or next month. I guess we're done.